Hello, this is the Greater Lagos Vision, and I'm your host, Love Ikuku Oyedoku. The fourth edition of the Babajide Sawunlu and Kadri Obafemi Hamzat Health Mission International Bosco has taken place. This edition of the Bosco Health Care Mission International was carried out in conjunction with the relaunch of the Jiki Bola Initiative. The Babajide Sawolu led administration has continued to lead the frontiers in delivering good health care in the diagnosis for hearing impairments and the provision of hearing aids. In the fourth edition, Bosco Health Mission Initiative made enough provision to carry out routine screening exercise on the residents across the 20 local government areas and the 37 LCDAs of the state. And this is the Greater Lagos Vision. Welcome once again. I'm Love Kuku Oyedoku. This episode features Bosco HMI 4th edition, 250,000 Lagosians to benefit from free healthcare intervention. Lagos State Government unveils smart ID card. Lagos, Sawulu Commission's digital modular school. Details of these and many more when we return. Please stay with us. About 250,000 residents of Lagos have been targeted for free medical treatment through the Jigibola Healthcare Initiative. Speaking at the flag of, of the fourth edition of Bosco Free Medical Outreach, tagged Jigibola relaunched phase two. Governor Sawulu maintains that his administration is more concerned about the health of the people and would ensure quality health care is delivered. <laughs> The relaunch of the Jigibola Initiative is in conjunction with the Babajide Sawunlu and Kadri Obafemi Hamzad Health Mission International, Bosco. The Jigibola Health Mission was launched during the administration of Ashiwaju Bola Tinubu as a free sight and hearing aid program of the Lagos State Government in 2001. The program targeted to reach over 250,000 Lagosians had no fewer than 961 volunteers providing medical services for the outreach. In this fourth edition, this mission has made enough provision to carry out routine screening exercises on the residents across the 20 local government areas and 37 LCDA of the state. And if you listen attentively to what the conveyor was saying, Mrs. Nikki Osai, she actually mentioned the fact that this will be taking place in different areas of the state, which she mentioned, Shomolu, Amuwa Dauphin, Etiosa, Ibejuleki, Koshofe, Moshin, Surulere, and so on and so forth. Governor Sawunlu is represented here. He discloses that through Bosco Health Mission International, his administration has continued to lead the frontiers in delivering good health care services for the citizens. This administration has also taken the bolder step by broadening the scope of this health mission to include other health provisions beyond the provision of visual and hearing aids to cater for the need of Lagosians whose health need do not fall within visual and hearing impairment alone. And we must not apologize or be apologetic for the growing number of cases, but we must take deliberate actions in reducing the statistics of hearing disabilities and lack of good vision. Similarly, the wife of the governor, Dr. Ibijuke Sawunlu, believes the program has contributed a great deal in achieving unparalleled impact in preventing major health risk among residents of the state. To urge the good people, it, especially those suffering from visual impairment, to take advantage of the initiative to improve their health. This is because a large number of cases of visual impairment 
could have been prevented if they were detected and treated effectively. She also commends volunteers and partners who have decided to work with the state government to ensure the success of the initiative. As part of measures at providing a reliable database in the state, the Lagos State Residence Registration Agency, LASRA, has launched the upgraded Lagos State Residence Identity Card, LAGSMART ID Card. The relaunch, according to the governor, Babajide Sawunlu, took place simultaneously across the five divisions as the state targets to produce 10 million cards before the end of the year. This is a venue of the relaunch to unveil the lag smart ID card at the police college Ikeja. It was filled to capacity with people from all walks of life thronging the venue to witness the event. The arrival of Governor Babajide Sawunlu got the place electrified as he acknowledged greetings from the people. The governor told the gatherings that the event took place simultaneously across the five divisions in order to meet up with its projected target to produce 10 million cars before the end of the year. I want to use this up to call on all of us, to call on all of us, let us acquire this Lagos resident card. And it will help us enjoy the many, many benefits on offer and enable us more thoroughly and effectively plan and budget for the delivery of the dividends of democracy against the backdrop of our ever-growing population. I'm certainly proud to note that the smart card benefiting the leading mega city in Africa, Lagos State. Tubosu Alake is a special advisor to the governor, Innovation and Technology. He described the launch as a landmark to catalyze the Lagos economy through technology. This new identity paradigm in Lagos tagged Lazra 2.0, that is what uh, we have called it, adopts industry-leading technology with world-class partners to deliver a comprehensive and elastic identity system that is future-proof and highly secure. General Manager of Lazra, Ibilola Kasimu, highlighted the unique features of the new Lagos Residence Card. This new card is a multi-purpose smart card with 28 applets that make the provision of 28 services possible to card holders. The new card is therefore a multi-application smart card that offers registered residents access to services ranging from serving as a means of personal security and identity verification at points of accessing gov various government services, validation of your residency status, and also financial inclusiveness by providing every resident with the ability to perform cashless transactions. She told the gathering that card holders can also use it as a means of payment for services across multiple vendors, including buses, ferries, supermarkets, and cash withdrawers from banks' automated teller machines. Casimo appealed to residents in the state who have not registered to do so by visiting the agency's website www.lagosresidence.gov.ng. Lagos State Governor Babajide Sawunlu has opened the newly built containerized modular classroom block in Vetland Junior Grammar School, Agege. He described the digitalized modular school as the future of public schools in Lagos, Nigeria, and Africa in general. This is a Vetland Junior Grammar School in Agege. The school was carved out of the existing Vetland Grammar School and officially took off on 6 January 2003. The former commissioning brought so much excitement to the students, parents and teachers as Governor Sawunlu made his way through the crowd. 
The governor in his keynote address told the gathering that his goal was to build schools of the future, public schools that are driven by cutting-edge technology. He described the modular school as a milestone on the journey towards ensuring that no child is left behind in Lagos State. This is the future of public school in Lagos. This is the future of public school in Nigeria. <clears throat> we believe this will be the future of public school in Africa. In terms of some numbers, our administration so far, we've constructed over 800 new classroom blocks in public school system. While we're completing rehabilitation of about 200 primary schools and secondary schools all within the next couple of weeks. We've also added about 180,000 units of furniture that have been supplied across all the six educational districts in the state. Commissioner for Education, Falashade Adefisayo, thanked Sawunlu for keeping his promise of increasing the ministry's yearly budgetary allocation. She described the Vetland Mojila building as one for ages. This building is unique, but it's unique again because for me as an educationist, I love nice buildings. I want the children to be in nice buildings. But for me, it's always about the teaching and learning, what is going on inside the school. And in the, this school, in each classroom, we have a smart whiteboard. We have tablets for the children. The teachers clock in using biometrics. And what this is going to do is that we are moving our children into the 21st century. Chairman of the Special Committee of Rehabilitation of Public Schools, Hakim Smith, noted that a new intermodal containerized building would encourage hybrid learning. He said pupils can learn remotely because of the type of technology deployed in the school. In 10 years from now, the kids from Betland are the ones who will digitize your civil service. It will be native to them. It will be native to them. It will be what they are used to doing from day one already. There would be the corporate leaders tomorrow who are going to be solving with critical thinking skills that they will learn in this classroom, solving problems for Lagos State. There would be the inventors in two years from now from the technology they have here. When you bring traditional learning into modern day technology, you have them at your fingertips. They are interested, they come alive. And then this solution, this technology sitting in this classroom allows them to interact with the teacher. There's room for critical thinking. There's room for creativity. So it's not just the teacher talking and talking and writing. Now they are actively involved. You can see that a lot of, all of the pupils have a PC. Everything going on on the screen is replicated on their PC. So they get to interact and collaborate. The containerized modular school building comprises nine regular classrooms, three laboratories, and four staff rooms, all solar powered. As a government entrusted with oversight and leadership of the public service, my administration will continue to give priority attention to all your needs, especially those that will improve your job satisfaction and your ability and capacity to meet the expectations of Lagosians. This reassurance came from Governor Babajide Sawonlu at the 2022 Public Service Week celebration. It was an auspicious occasion organized to recognize Lagos State public servants who have been adjudged outstanding in various ministries, agencies, and parastators statewide. The grand finale was part of activities lined up to commemorate the 2022 Public Service Week. The stakes were high, so also expectations of these civil servants all anticipating to win. The arrival of Governor Babajide Sawunlu set the tone for the moment. The governor stepped to the podium, reassuring that the workers' welfare was topmost in his agenda. As a government that is entrusted with oversight and the leadership of the public service, we will continue to give priority attention to all of your needs, especially those that will improve the quality of your job and give you a higher level of job satisfaction and increase your ability and capacity to meet 
the very, very high expectations of Lagosians. Earlier, the head of service, Muri Okwonla, highlighted the selection process for recipients of award. A total number of 334 nominations were received from MDAs, local governments, and LCDAs for year 2020-2021. Out of this nomination, a total of 190 officers were finally recommended to receive the Outstanding Officers Award in line with the aforementioned. And the moment finally came. Ten car keys were presented to the lucky winners drawn from both senior and junior categories. Mojisola Oyeleki won a business class return ticket to Dubai. With the support of Airpeace Nigeria, you are flying business class to Dubai. Ah, need to... I'm very grateful. Yeah. I'm not expecting it, but I'm very grateful. I thank my God that you do wonder for me. I know I don't know that God will answer me this way. Bola Agbabiaka, on behalf of other awardees, thanked Governor Sawunlu for counting them worthy of such an honor. He said the award will spur them to more service. Lagos State Governor Babajide Sawunlu has unveiled and handed over 48 units of Greater Lagos LBIC apartments in Ogbaijayi Pen Cinema of Agege. The project, according to Sawunlu, is a testament to his administration's commitment to providing affordable housing for Lagosians. The Greater Lagos LBIC apartments comprise two three bedroom flats and four units of the four bedroom maisonette. It is a joint venture arrangement involving Lagos Building Investment Company, PLC, and RPDC Limited. Governor Sawunlu, in fulfillment of his administration's promise, handed over keys to 14 families that were displaced as a result of the construction of the Agege Pen Cinema with no payment or charges. For us, this is not only about the affordability of the housing, but also about, it's not only about the availability, but it's also about the affordability. We're concerned about ensuring that not only are the houses reasonably priced, but that they are also creative in financing mechanism that gives people the capacity and the convenience to pay based on their future earning and incomes. And so it is our quest to provide decent yet affordable accommodation to the people of the state. We have in close partnership with the private sector. Today, in just about three years, we've handed over almost 4,000 housing units across the state. So Wolo disclosed that since the inception of his administration, it has commissioned not less than 15 affordable and decent housing projects and delivered more than 3,526 housing units across the state, noting that the ongoing land reform was its commitment to addressing the challenge of housing deficits in Lagos State. He said the Greater Lagos LBIC apartments are an example of what is possible in this regard. Given a lot of land to some of our big developers to also help them so that we can monitor and they can help us also ensure that we can activate you know, housing need to a lot of our citizens. Indeed, our view has always been that the most efficient way to address the housing challenge we face as a mega city is for government to enable and empower the private sector to also deploy adequate um, capital in this area. It is true meaning of public-private partnership, each player bringing its strength to bear to deliver a sustainable project that benefits the people and the state. And they say the Lagos, the Greater Lagos LBS Apartment is an example of that testament. And so it's my pleasure <coughs> to announce and to be able to hand over to the 14 families that were displayed because of the construction of our very iconic Agege Pen Cinema Bridge. We now have accommodated all of them under this scheme and that their flats will be allocated to them here today at no cost at all. Thank you. 
And so I would like to use this medium to appeal to all of our housing agencies, all of them, most of them are here, to continue to engage robustly with the private sector as well as other stakeholders to jointly address the housing deficit in our mega city of Lagos State. Our expectation is that within a couple of months, LBIC, which is my, which is one of their primary roles, and I've charged them again, um, and I'm sure maybe next month or the month after, they should be handing over about 320 units in Amu Odofi. They should be completing about 360 units in Obeleoniwala in Suruliri. They should be completing another 64 units at Olaleye in Iponri. They should at an advanced stage of 132 units at the Ikeja. And they also at very advanced stage with shopping malls they have at Leki and Ikeja. I think LBRC deserves a round of applause. I'm sure if I should roll out the one for LSDPC, they also have a lot that I'm aware of. They have houses that they've built in Ilupeju, in Victoria Island, in Suruliri, in Ogba. That's for LSDPC. And for Ministry of Housing, we're waiting for you. I know you are the bigger boys there. You have in Bagada, you have in Ikurudu, you have in Ekpe. So let's just wrap it up. Let's have all of those houses off the shelf, Mr. Commissioner. Okay? In his address, the managing director, Lagos Building Investment Company, Uluwa Tobiloba Lawa, said Governor Sawunlu's commitment in ensuring that a housing deficit in Lagos State is reduced and affordable to Lagosians is commendable. The highlight of this event is the magnanimity of our dear Mr. Governor to reallocate and hand over keys to families that were displayed as a result of the construction of Agege Pen Cinema Bridge. These flats are to be given free with no cost. This is another expression of this administration on common compassion, and strong determination to meet yearnings and aspirations of the good people of Lagos State. It is important to know that the project to be commissioned was achieved as a result of collaboration with RPDC Limited, which is a construction company. The scheme comprises of 48 units of two and three bedroom flats. Also, four units of four bedroom masonnets. May I seize this opportunity to thank the management of RPDC Limited for a job well done. Speaking on behalf of the 14 families who were allocated apartments in the Greater Lagos LBIC apartments, Mrs. Esther Ogumbajo recalls that about five years ago, their flats were demolished for the Penn Cinema Bridge. When His Excellency Baba Jide Sanwolu emerged as the executive governor of Lagos State, we continued the protest and the fight with the government. But because His Excellency has a listening ears, he called us to a round table talk. He promised to build another flat for us, although we did not believe him. But we are here today to collect the keys to our appointment. Today, our joy has no measure. By the special grace of God, COP 2023, we promise you the fault of everyone in this community. This is a clear evidence His Excellency will deliver his manifesto. We wish you success in the forthcoming election in 2023. She commended Governor Sawunlu for fulfilling his promise to compensate them promising that the residents will vote en masse to re-elect the governor during the next governorship election. That's all we have for you in this episode of the Greater Lagos Vision on Plus TV Africa. I'm Lovikuku Oyedoku. Bye for now. <laughs>